So now we've come down to this. You've seen how atoms come together to form compounds. You've seen how elements, compounds react together to form chemical reactions. You've determined whether a reaction is going to be fast or slow and how to make it faster or slower. But here's a question we haven't really asked yet. Is the reaction going to happen or isn't it going to happen? How do we know if a reaction is going to take place? Well, we could actually go into a laboratory and try it to see if it works, or we could use what is called thermodynamic qualities to determine it. See, when you go downhill, you don't have to put any energy into it. It just happens by itself until it's done. That's called spontaneous. When you go uphill, if you stop putting energy into it, you're going to stop the process. It's going to reverse itself in most cases. You're going to fall off your bike and roll down the hill. Ouch, ouch, ouch. That's called non-spontaneous, where without a constant input of energy, the change is not going to happen. One of the factors that decides whether a reaction happens or not is entropy, which is a system's natural tendency to go towards a state of disorder randomness. Entropy is dependent on the system's temperature. Entropy is given the symbol S, as in mess, and a change in entropy is referred to as delta S, delta is change, S is entropy, and it's measured in kilojoules per Kelvin. For this course you will not be required to do any calculations involving delta S. Nature is messy. Now remember in the last video we said nature is lazy. Nature is lazy and nature is messy. In other words, when you go from a neat situation to a messy situation, that's an increase in entropy. Nature favors that, right? I mean, your bedroom gets messy all by itself. This nice neat little stack of papers I have right here with the barest amount of energy basically becomes an exercise in chaos all by itself. But in order to clean that room back up, in order to actually go and pick up all the pieces of paper and put them back the way they were, that's not spontaneous. Believe me, I would much rather not be doing this. That's unfavored. Now, how can you tell if a system increases in entropy or decreases in entropy? Well, in general, in the solid phase, the substance has very low entropy because the atoms or molecules are arranged in a nice regularly shaped crystal lattice. In the liquid phase, they have a little bit more entropy because the molecules are free to move around, so their motion is random. As a gas, they've got maximum entropy. Their molecules are going to move wherever the heck they want. So if you're going from a solid to a liquid to a gas, that's an increase in entropy. If you're going from a gas to a liquid to a solid, that's a decrease in entropy. If you go from less gas to more gas, that's an increase in entropy. If you go from more gas to less gas, that's a decrease in entropy. Here we have a solid and a liquid, a solid and a liquid. By the time we're done with the reaction, it's all solid. That's a decrease in entropy. That is not favored. And that doesn't mean the reaction is not going to happen, it just means one, there's one strike against it happening. You start off with a solid, you end off with a solid and a liquid. End up, start with a solid, end up with a solid and a liquid. Entropy increased. That's favored. Again, that doesn't automatically mean that this is going to happen. But what this means is that there is one thing in its favor for happening. What's the other thing? We'll look at that in a minute. We start off with gases and we end with gases. Since we have the same phase, we have to see what happens to the amount of gas we have. Here we have four moles of gas. One plus three is four moles of gas flying around. When we're done, we only have two moles of gas flying around. Entropy goes down because there's less flying around. Hey, that rhymed. And that is unfavored. Again, that doesn't mean that this reaction is not going to happen. That's just one strike against it. There's something else we can do to figure out if this will work. The other factor is the one we did yesterday, enthalpy, potential energy. Now remember we said nature favors a decrease in potential energy. Nature is lazy and messy. Entropy is lazy and messy. Favored, 
Enthalpy, negative delta H, exothermic. Exothermic reactions are favored. Entropy, positive delta S, positive change in entropy, messy. What would be unfavored? Well, the opposite. Going up in energy, which would be endothermic, or becoming less messy, becoming cleaner. Now, any reaction where both factors are favored, that reaction is going to happen always. And any reaction where both factors are unfavored will never happen on its own. You're going to have to put in constant energy to make sure that it happens. In this reaction here, we start off with a solid and we end up with particles dissolved in water. We've gone from a crystal lattice to particles floating around in water, which means that the entropy increases. It's positive. Nature favors messy situations. That's favored. The enthalpy, the delta H is negative. It's an exothermic reaction. Energy was released. That's exothermic, a negative delta H. That's favored lazy. Since both factors are favored, this reaction will be spontaneous at all temperatures. As long as water is a liquid, because you can't dissolve stuff in water if water is a solid or a gas. In this next reaction, we have solid plus gas turning completely into solid. That's a decrease in entropy. That is unfavored. But it's extremely exothermic, negative 3,351 joules. That's a lot of energy released. That's really exothermic. That's favored. So if the exothermic factor beats out the less messy factor, this reaction will work. How do you do that? Lower the temperature. If entropy is not favored, a low temperature is what you want. Spontaneous at low temperatures. Finally, we have a solid that dissolves in water to form an aqueous solution. That's an increase in entropy. That's favored. But our delta H is positive. That's endothermic. That's unfavored. So again, we want to make the favored factor bigger. Well, entropy is favored, so at a higher temperature, you'll have higher entropy. Spontaneous at high temps. So the thing you need to take away from this is there's two factors that are involved in determining whether a reaction will happen or not. The enthalpy, or how much energy is absorbed or released, and entropy, how messy is the system.